Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Hey everybody and welcome back to another video. So it's been a year since I started dosing bacteria to my reef tanks, but before I get into the video, if you'd like to help support the channel and pick up some SPS frags, please visit reefbum.com. And with that, let's get into the video. So I have been using Brightwell's Microbacter 7 and Clean for about a year right now, and I kind of wanted to give a bit of a report card in terms of my impressions during this past year. I've been dosing both of these products one time per week, about a day apart. And there were really five ma major considerations I had in my head in terms of whether or not I wanted to use these products. And, you know, I, I initially wanted to use them just on the 187 gallon tank, but then I decided to also use it on the 225 gallon tank. Now I had persistent cyano in the 187 gallon tank, in the display tank, and in my frag tanks. It wasn't like a crazy amount of cyano, but it was enough to annoy me. Now, MB7 does help with the red-brown algaes, and I had heard some anecdotal evidence from another hobbyist that it had helped, um, you know, clear up cyano in his tank. So I, uh, that, was, that was a big consideration. The other is that I did have some green algaes in uh, the system, in the 187-gallon tank, display tank, as well as the frag tanks. I had some bryopsis and some ulva, which is like this lettuce algae, and clean does help with green algaes. The other part that I liked about dosing bacteria is that it does lower nutrients, and on the 187 gallon tank, I had a refugium with Cato in it, and on my 225 gallon tank, I have a uh, algae reactor with Cato inside of it. So, you know, Cato can be a pain sometimes. It's crashed on me um, numerous times, so it, it can be a fine line, for me at least, in terms of keeping it alive. So that appealed to me to be able to utilize bacteria dosing to help fight the green algaes. Now, you know, so would I be able to take the Cato offline dose bacteria and have that act as a nutrient reduction replacement? I don't know. But um, the other thing that I liked about potentially dosing bacteria is that, you know, there is a potential benefit for corals. Corals do eat bacteria. Now, the key question that I've addressed on, on, on a number of videos and also during my live streams is that, you know, can skimming, protein skimmers, can they pull out enough beneficial bacteria so that it does have to be replaced? I don't know. I think there is... Um, still some work to be done, maybe perhaps not enough evidence out there that this is the case. So yeah, these were the factors that I was considering for dosing bacteria. So one thing I should also mention in terms of the consideration factor is that the 225 gallon tank didn't really have any algae issues at the time, but I did like the idea of being able to get rid of the Cato reactor to use the uh, bacteria dosing to help keep nitrates and phosphates in check. I also like the fact that it could be beneficial to coral. So I wanted to include the 225 gallon tank in this uh, little experiment of mine. So observations after one year. Well, the cyanide was still present in my 187 gallon system, but I don't have as much. I have some still left in the frag tanks. I did a, uh, a big reboot on the 187 gallon tank recently, and a lot of the cyanide was in the sand bed. Uh, actually, the sand bed, I, I talked about this in, in my uh, prior video. I had a, uh, a calcified sand bed, so I had a lot of cyanide on the calcified sand bed, a little bit in the rocks. So it's been a couple of weeks later, and, and uh, knock on wood, no cyano in the sand bed in that display tank. But as I mentioned, I still have some in the uh, frag, one of the frag tanks plumbed into the uh, display. I um, really am seeing a lot less green algae, so less bryopsis, and ova, barely any ova in the, uh, in the frag system and in the display tank. The nitrates and phosphates in both systems didn't really change a lot, which is a good thing, right? That was something that I was hoping that I could do. 
So that's you know a big benefit for me is being able to dose the bacteria and not have to worry about the hassles with Cato crashing on me and, and, and the maintenance of all that get pretty, pretty messy. But overall, for me, the biggest plus is that my corals are looking good. They're looking healthy. Has bacteria dosing helped? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the proof. But moving forward, I'm going to continue to dose bacteria. I like the fact that it helps reduce the uh, nutrients in the tank. It does help in terms of some of the uh, problematic algae. I may adjust the dosage of the MB7 or use potentially even another product to help knock back the cyano even more. Um, certainly good old elbow grease will help, I think, you know, in that regard with the 187 gallon tank. The fact that um, I was able to pull out that calcified sand bed and have a much bigger and open aquascape to allow the uh, detritus not to settle, you know, more flow in that tank, that, that certainly helps. But, you know, overall, I'd like to see more research out there. Do, uh, do protein skimmers pull out enough of the uh, beneficial bacteria that they need to be replaced? That would be an interesting, interesting study to see if it's out there. And uh, yeah, the fact that uh, there seems to be enough concrete data to support the fact that corals do consume bacteria does bacteria dosing help on that front? I'd like to know that, um, you know, maybe more data on that would be super, uh, super uh, interesting. So that's it with this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Uh, be safe, be well, and we will see you next time.